What Flexbox is, is a means to really organize elements. And the way it works is you have a parent container and you have children. And the parent container, using a property called display, and the value of display is flex. So it's basically a way to just distribute items. And you'll hear the term container a lot when we talk about Flexbox. It's actually something that's used in Bootstrap as well. So the idea of a container being the means to hold the content and the children of the container is, are the, um, uh, the children basically are the items inside the container. I have a simple web page and I'm going to comment out the container class that I have on top here. So you can see what this looks like. And this is kind of following the nav concept that we went through last week. So basically all this is, is a list of links. So I have a, uh, I have a list of, hold on one sec here, a list of links. And this is what we did last week. We basically created this uh, unnumbered list with the list items. Each list item is a actual link. Now, what we did last time was change the links from block elements to block inline elements using a class with the property of display set to block inline. So when you use a display property of block inline, the vertical links will become horizontal. But we can actually do this with Flexbox as well. So kind of let me show you, let me show you from scratch here. So I'm gonna create my class style for container. So container is the name of the class style for this unnumbered list element, the UL element. And this is pretty straightforward. So if I use this display property and I set it to flex, all of those link elements now go from being vertical to horizontal. And that's just a, another way of creating that horizontal list of links versus using um, display block inline. So a couple other things you can do with this then is basically what we did with the nav bar before in the previous week, we went into the list item and created an element class of list style and we set that to none to get rid of the bullet point. So that gets rid of the bullet point. We can also increase the width of the actual link uh, list items as well, because they're now technically acting like block elements. So we can give that a width. So I can give each one of those a width of let's say 200 pixels. Now they're spaced out. And then I can get rid of the underline too by setting text decoration for the A element to, to none. So this is kind of what we had last week. Um, same exact idea. Instead, last week, instead of a display set to flex, we used just using inline. So setting the display for inline. So but anyway, setting display to inline is, is the same thing as basically using flex as the, as the value here. But the difference is flex has to be applied to the container, which is the uh, UL, the unnumbered list. So there's a couple more things you can do with flex, which is going to be helpful, I think, for your next assignment, which is the 
gallery assignment with the nav bar. So with Flexbox, what you can do is you can do a number of things that go beyond just changing your vertical list or horizontal list. You can change the order of things. You can change the, you can change the direction. So here in this example, I have several different uses of Flexbox. So one thing you can do is change direction. So that's kind of what we did going from vertical to horizontal. You can change the order. So instead of going one, two, three, I'm changing the order with the order uh, property. And you can also change the size of the items as well. So you can have um, items basically fill up the space or you can give it a, give each item a designated size and you can change um, size ratios. So here, this is just talking about the container. You have a container and items in that container and the parent is gonna have that display property uh, set to flex just like as you see, see here. So, so this parent is UL, the children are the LI and the UL parent has a display property set to flex. So the structure of the flex container, you basically have your coordinates and you have a start going from left to right, a main start, a main end, and then you have the vertical section called the cross section and that's that has a cross start and a cross end. So when you create that display property, you're going to want to use either flex or you can use um, inline flex, but basically the idea is just using flex will work uh, for that. So in, the, in a way it's taking block elements that flow top to bottom and making them inline. So this is just showing you, you know, hypothetically, you have a parent container. You don't have to use dot container. It can be anything, dot box. As long as the parent, as long as that parent has a display with a display property with the value set to uh, flex. So that's what I just said, basically. Takes items, makes them flow horizontally. So let's talk about some of the things we can do with this. And I have um, several examples to show you. So in this example, I have this order property and the order property can be set to a number. And that number is basically going to tell you what order that item comes in. So with this, you would probably have multiple items. You, know, you would have maybe a class of item one and then a class of item two and then the order would be this number here, order one and order two. So let me show you an example of this. So what I have here is basically um, a series of divs and each div is given a class. And for the text in here, I have the order set up Basically it's random. So right now it's random. But what I want to do now with the order property is rearrange the order. So box one will actually come first, then box two, then box three, then box four. The parent element or the container element is main. So main is the container. So main has that display property set to flex. So the first thing you want to do is use that display property and set the flex because otherwise order won't work all by itself. You need to have a parent element with a display property set to flex. And now here are the divs for that main element. And you can see here, I'm setting the order. So down below, these come in a different order. But if I want my red div to be first, Well, actually, if I want, um, so this is showing you without the order property being used, so here no order property is being used. So everything is kind of showing up in the order that it's listed. 
in the HTML in the body. But once I apply that order property up here, I can make box one first. If I give that pink box, which is right over here, an order of one. So it doesn't matter which order it comes in in my actual code. If I give that pink box an order of one, it's going to be first. Then the red box, order of two, uh, green box, order of three, blue box, order of four. So that's using that order property, but that only works if that if these divs are children of a container, which main is the container, and that container has to have a display property set, set to flux. So that's using that's using order. So there's other, um, so the other, so some um, properties now for flex are only gonna be set to the parent and some properties are only gonna be set to the uh, children elements. So here's a list of properties for the parent. So we have flex direction, we have flex wrap, we have flex flow, we have flex content, flex aligns and align content. So flex, um, flex direction works like this. So if I already have a display set to flex, I can use flex direction. And I have four choices basically. I have column, column reverse, row, and row reverse. If I use um, row reverse, It's basically just changing everything from starting at the left side to uh, starting at the right side and it's switching the order. So without it, if I go back, pink box is first because I had an order set to one. But if, you, if I use a row reverse flex direction, I'm changing that order. So that's changing the order. Then I can change the direction by going from a column to a row by using a uh, column here. So just using column took all of my items now and it made them go vertically. And the other thing that it's doing too is that it's respecting the actual size designated by the parent. So the parent has a size of 150 pixels. So all these items will fit within that space. If I go back to row, um, if I go back to row, these are obeying the width I have set for this class for the div here. So if you have a width of a certain size and it's under the amount of space given by the width of the parent property, then those will fit according to their size. But if I change this width, let's say to some crazy number like to a thousand, they kind of squish in there. So they'll basically stop at the size that makes all of them fit together. Um, and then column, you can reverse column as well. So you can do the same thing with column. You can do a column uh, reverse. So now they're stretching out to a thousand pixels or up to the width of the browser window, but now they're going in the column reverse direction. So you can change direction. Uh, uh, flex wrap basically lets you fill out the space. So in this example here, I'm using flex wrap. And if I say uh, no wrap, Basically everything fits within the width of that parent element, that parent container. Uh, the parent here has a width set to 100%. So basically it's gonna squeeze everything down no matter what. If the parent container had a width of a fixed width, let's say of 300 pixels, then everything fits into 300 pixels. So it basically ignores the width of the children and it just fits in there as much as possible. If the width of the children are less when added together, 
to equal the width of the parent, then they'll, they'll follow that width that's designated for the children. If not though, they're gonna just basically squeeze in and fit within the uh, width of the uh, parent. So here, if I do a percentage, no matter how big or small I make my, my window, everything's going to fit in there. But if I change my child's width, then when that width um, becomes less than the space given to me within the browser window, then I'm gonna have items being pushed down. So if I squeeze this window now, and that's using, and I should say that it's using wrap, if I use wrap, then everything's gonna be squeezed down. So basically it's looking at these boxes up here. And once the width becomes less than 200 pixels for each box, then that those boxes will go to the next row. So this was a question that somebody had uh, last time. How do you create like a grid format that pushes everything down? Kind of similar to Pinterest almost. Well, this is kind of the one of the ways to do it. And you could say that this is responsive now. So something like this would work good on a phone. When I'm looking at it on my phone, um, I'm gonna have the boxes fit within a certain size based on the width of the screen for the phone. So this, is, this idea is a responsive uh, uh, type design. What, so, does, what happens if you change um, flex grow in the children? So Flex Grow is doing something different. So what Flex Grow is doing is um, if I, let's say, um, let's say my width is at 100 pixels and Flex Wrap is set to no wrap. And not only that, but um, my container is, let's say I have six children, a width of 600 pixels, but let's say my container is set to 800 pixels. So what, um, what's happening with, with this now is that um, everything is set to this size, but if I change my flex grow property here, um, let's see, I think I can't, Got to get rid of wrap too. And let me, uh, let me change, let me make this even smaller. Um, let's see. So if I set flex grow to zero, uh, basically what it's doing is it's making, it's basically um, taking my children, which are set to 50 pixels. And even though the container is set to a thousand and maybe to help see that I'll give it a border. So this flex container is set to a thousand, but my children are only set to 50. So it only fills the space that far. If I set flex grow to one, it fills up the whole space um, completely. So flex grow is basically allowing you to take a flex item that is a smaller width uh, in combination with its siblings. Uh, and that width is smaller than the main width of the container and it's pushing it out to fill the container. Okay. If, if I don't use flex grow, it's just going to be, um, uh, it's just not, it's not gonna, it's just gonna add up the widths down here. And then once they reach that point, it will end it. But if I use a flex grow set to one, then they will fill it up like that. Um, and then if I go back to flex wrap, 
and say wrap. Basically, flex um, the flex grow is ignoring the um, the wrap. And here too, let me see. Um, well, I think it. Um, It seems to ignore it up to a certain point. So oh, so flex what what flex wrap is doing though, if this width is um I'll make the width back here, I'll make it back to hundred percent. So if this wrap is applied to a width of 100% and and flex grow is set to um, a value of one, um, it, sh it should squeeze into the space. But once you increase that width to a certain point, it will push everything down. So it's kind of a combination that you have to figure out what's going to work for what you want to do. If I had the flex grow set to zero though, um, and these items do not um, equal a size that's greater than the pixel width of the actual window, then it will fit within the parent container. But once this um, width gets greater than a number that equals the width of the window, then it will be pushed down. And I think that's kind of part, what FlexGrow does too, it acts like a multiplier. So if I say two, it, um, it will basically multiply this width by two. And then once this um, combination gets greater than the screen of the, of the window itself, then it pushes down. But if I have it set to one, let's see or let's say zero, then it only pushes down if each of these items set at that width of 100 pixels is greater than, because it's having, there's no um, room for, for it to grow now. Oh, so you're saying if you type two for flex grow, then effectively the children become 200 pixels wide? Um, well, it, it's filling it up, and then I think it's once this multiplier um, oh. reaches a size where the screen is less than, um, if this is 600, then it's looking at, I think, a size of uh, 1,200 pixels. And then once it gets less than that size, then it pushes down. Oh, OK. So that's the multiplier. Here, I think it's looking for a size less than 600. So that's the difference. That's 600. And if I say two, um, uh, it doesn't seem like it's making much of a difference, actually. Let me try four. Yeah, it seems like, you know, you don't really see much happening with that. You would see um, a difference though. Let's say to really see what's going on with flex grow. Let's say I have a, a separate class here of like child one. And then all the children have no flex grow, let's say. So basically once they, um, you know, they're not going to really change much because that size of a hundred pixels times six is less than the width of the screen. But now let's say I have child one. And I'll give it a different border color so it stands out. So this blue child, if I give that a flex grow, of two, then it's going to double the size of that one element. So, you know, four. Um, 
And basically it works when you stretch out to a certain point as well. So So it's basically taking that one element and um, increasing the size based on the number of elements that are in the parent container. So then if I get, you know, if I set a zero, then everything is the same because there's no multiplier down here. So here is where you can have, like I can have, um, just set to two. Um, maybe I have a child three down here. And have that flex grow set to a different number. So that's set to two, that's set to four. So it's giving each one a different ratio based on that. Uh, flex grow modifier. So this will let you control items of different uh, widths. And then when it gets pushed down, you know, this has, um, because of that flex grow property, it fills up the space accordingly. It's kind of nice because you can play with your margins. So increasing the margins kind of has, you know, a different effect there. Um, and you can play with padding as well. So you can kind of pay with, play with layout a little bit more. So um, Flexbox order, let's see. There's some other Flexbox items you can play with too. Um, uh, flex direction, I showed you. Um, wrap reverse for flex wrap will just re reverse the order. Um, you can play with um, uh, justify content. So let me get rid of the flex grow. Let me get rid of these children. Well, I'll keep them actually. Um, So justify content will let you create space. Um, so if you say, uh, center and actually let me get rid of flex grow. And so what basically that does is now my elements are centered or you can say um, space between and then that adds an even amount of space in between each elements as you make them bigger. Um, it's kind of easier to see if I have a background color to So that's um, space between, which is kind of cool. And then you can say um, space around. And space around is kind of a combination of center and space um, in between. So that's kind of a cool effect as well for some sort of gallery. It gives you a nice even um, distribution of elements on the page. You can, um, play with a line. So um, so I can say align items. 
um, baseline. And that has to kind of work with the height. So that's less than the container. So let's say I say give it a, this height here. So um, I'll give uh, these different heights actually so you can kind of see it. So right now you're seeing the content being aligned to the baseline, which is the bottom. Um, or you can say center. Now they're in the middle and that's kind of an interesting way to align things. Um, or you can say stretch. And that's going to align them to the top. So aligning different ways within the parent. In a way to think about it, if like if you're using InDesign or Illustrator, this align, um, the combination of justify content and align items is asking like align and distribute with, within a, in those software pa packages. And then you can also um, do the same thing for the content inside. So you can, if there's content inside those boxes, you can align the content inside as well. So that's something else you can do. Um, so those properties, these properties that I'm showing you right now, these are being applied to the container, the parent. And then these properties over here, flex grow, flex shrink, flex basis, and align self, those are properties for Flexbox that you apply to the children. So with Flexbox, some properties get applied to the parent, some get applied to the children. Um, flex shrink is kind of the opposite of flex grow. So the way that works is as my width gets smaller and I have one item, this, um, this ninth, um, this uh, second item here, it's the, um, it's, it's using pseudocode by the way. So if I say div colon nth of the type and in parentheses, I put a number, I can pick which div it's being applied to based on that number. So number two is being applied to the second div. Um, so that second div has a flex shrink of two. So when the width gets to a certain point, then it starts to uh, scale the size back. Um, flex um, grow does the opposite in a way that it pushes everything out and flex shrinks causes itself to be squeezed in. And flex basis um, kind of gives you a set number and then that set number is basically the number that it starts with. So it kind of, it's what basis does, set basis, it ignores any width that's set. So here, this is the, this number two is the second um, class here, this flex number two. If I made that set to a larger number, it's gonna basically start at a um, larger pixel size but it's still being based on the screen width itself. So you can use a combination of flex grow, flex shrink, and flex basis, but it gets kind of tricky. Um, and then this setup here is a um, shorthand. So if you use um, flex and you use three numbers like this. The first number is flex grow, the second number is uh, flex shrink, and the third number is flex basis. So you just gotta figure out how to use a combination of those, um, those properties. So flex grow is how much an item grows, flex shrink is how much it shrinks, and flex basis is the initial size that you set. Um, So if you say um, 
zero, the current size for flex, flex basis is defined by the content of the elements. So whatever is inside those elements would define the size. And then if you say auto, um, the content is ignored. And um, we kind of went over flex growing, flex shrink. And so that, this is the example that I did in the beginning. So again, if I have all these links, so, you know, one of the quickest ways to create that nav bar is to um, So if I have a list of links, um, well, this is even a, a this isn't even a list of links. It's um, oops, get rid of that. Just links going across here, and um, I have the nav. Um, let's say set the flex and then I can say, um, uh, I can say, let's see, uh, flex wrap set to wrap. And then um, for the links themselves, I can say um, flex grow set to two. Then I can make those links fill up the space. And then um, if I give each of those links like a width, And once this window gets um, smaller than that width, let me do it. Um, uh, yeah, I'll go back to 100. Once that window gets narrow enough, then it will start to push the um, links to the line down below. So that's using flex with flex wrap and flex grow with width set to the, um, the link, the A element, which is the link. So that's basically, basically um, using Flexbox. You know, if you, there's a lot of resources out there for this. Um, I think the easiest thing to remember is just using a display set to flex um, and then playing with wrap to have things pushed down if you, have widths that are greater than a certain size. So I think even if I make this width set that there, there you really see it. If I, so I set the width to 500 for the A element, then I have that effect, which is kind of the effect you want. That might even be too much, but maybe. Let's see. This is the effect you want for a responsive navigation for like a phone, let's say. So on your web browser, everything is um, horizontal, left to right, but on your phone, everything gets pushed down top to bottom. That's using that combination of wrap and um, flex growth. So any questions about using flex?